Madam Clerk, please note all members are still present. I'll take a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion from Member Pat, second from Vice Mayor Medina to approve the agenda. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue. Aye. Council Member Martinez. Aye. Council Member Pats. Aye. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. And Mayor Bowders. Aye. Special orders of the day. First item is recognition of Emerville Police Department volunteer Elena Alejo, Chief of Police. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have to speak at that speed? No. <laughs> Thank you. Um, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and City Council members. It's my pleasure this evening to present to you um, our volunteer, Elaine Alejo. Come on up, Elaine. Elaine has been with the police department for six years, and uh, she came to us in 2009. She's working at a biotech company here in Emeryville and attended our uh, Community Citizen Academy in 2009. In 2011, the Emeryville Police Department started its Citizen Academy, and uh, Elaine was one of the first graduates of that academy. Out of that academy, we solicited for volunteers for the police department. She's one of three who applied to be a volunteer and the only one who made it past the background <laughs> test. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed some, to say that. <laughs> some things that... Congrats, Elaine. Um, uh, Elaine is always positive and upbeat. Always this smile on her face. Throughout her six years of volunteer service, she's assisted in a wide variety of community events and department functions. Some of the events she assisted with were National Night Out, Emeryville Community Expo at ECCL, the Holiday Parade, physical agility testing for our police officer candidates, and the 4th of July traffic detail. Of all her volunteer efforts, the one event Elaine will be missed most of all will be the 4th of July detail. Every year, she handed out hundreds of stickers and glow bracelets to children. She's helped many hundreds of pedestrians, young and old, make it safely across Frontage Road to view the fireworks celebrations. She's always represented the department well and has been an ambassador for our agency and our city and for law enforcement throughout her time as a volunteer. She's greatly appreciated by us, and she will be greatly missed by all of us. And on behalf of the community, we have a little something for you. Oh, wow. And I'll just read it. It says, in grateful appreciation of six years of excellent service as a volunteer to the Emeryville Police Department and the community of Emeryville, this award is presented to our volunteer, Elaine Alejo. Elaine, would you like to say anything? Oh, no. Just thank you to everyone and to the department and all the guys. Everyone's been wonderful. It's been a pleasure, and I will, I'll definitely miss it. So, well, we're very grateful for all your services, the chief noted, to our community and for keeping our kids and families safe and um, very well earned, and we appreciate your time here. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have time for a quick picture? Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Point two is a proclamation recognizing Immigrant Heritage Month in the city of Emeryville. Uh, Cecilia, would you like to join me up here? For you. Thank you. So we have a proclamation. Um, for proclaiming the month of June 2018 as Immigrant Heritage Month in the city of Emeryville. And I'd like to thank Council Member uh, Martinez for helping us identify uh, the Bataan Historical Society for being here today. 
Whereas California is a land of immigrants within a nation of immigrants, and each generation is refreshed by new arrivals from other countries, building the United States' economy and contributing to its unique character. And whereas immigrant groups continue to help society thrive, innovate, and grow stronger with hard work, determination, and the wealth of their cultural traditions. And whereas despite these contributions, the role of immigrants in building and enriching our nation has frequently been overlooked and undervalued throughout history and continuing to the present day. And whereas whether they have come to enjoy the promise of freedom and opportunity to rejoin family and communities already here, or to escape hostile and dangerous oppression in other countries, immigrants and refugees from around the world have become great assets to our communities. And whereas at a time in our history when national leadership seeks to denigrate immigrants' moral character and to exclude them from the political process, our businesses and our communities, and many would choose to forget their own immigrant heritage. And whereas immigrants have been tireless leaders not only in securing their own rights and access to equal opportunity, but have also campaigned to create a fairer and more just society for all Americans. And whereas when we reflect on our own immigrant journeys, however long ago they may have been, we recognize the many struggles and hardships of our ancestors and understand why we must remain welcoming communities. Now, therefore be it resolved, that as mayor of the city of Emeryville, and on behalf of the city council of the city of Emeryville, I hereby proclaim June 2018 as Immigrant Heritage Month in the city of Emeryville and encourage celebration of the many forms of immigrant heritage and the vast contributions that immigrants have made to our city and our nation. And be it further resolved that we take pride in how welcoming and attractive our city is to immigrants and renew our commitment to support laws and policies that provide for the successful integration of the newest Emeryville residents. Proclaim this fifth day of June, 2018, at a regular city council meeting by the mayor of Emeryville. Thank you, Mayor Balter. Thank you, um, Diane, and members of the City Council and the citizens of uh, Emeryville. It is such a great honor and privilege for me to be here to represent Bataan Legacy Historical Society and the Filipino community. I came here to the United States in 1978, and I never appreciated my heritage until just a few years ago when I discovered that not too many people here in the United States know about what the Filipino veterans did during World War II. For 75 years, their sacrifices were forgotten. They were part of the U.S. Army forces in the Far East, and the Philippines, which was a territory of the United States, was attacked just hours after Pearl Harbor. However, the Filipino um, soldiers of the U.S. Army forces in the Far East were undertrained, under-equipped, and little did they know that their fate was already sealed long before the first bomb hit Pearl Harbor. In accordance with the war plan, no reinforcement was going to be sent to the Philippines until the war in Europe was over. And so by January of 1942, not even a month after the war started, the soldiers were put in half rations. By March, they were on quarter rations, so that by April 9, they were forced to surrender. Most of them were suffering from disease and starvation. They were forced to march some 65 miles away in sweltering heat, triple degree, temperature, 100% humidity, with no provisions for food, water, shelter, or medicine. And those who could no longer go on were either beaten, bayoneted, shot, some were even beheaded. This became known as the Bataan Death March, and approximately between five to 10,000 Filipinos and about 650 Americans died during the 65-mile march. Another 20,000 Filipinos and 1,600 Americans died while in prison. For so long, 
this seminal event, not just of Asian history, but this is American history, has been forgotten. But on July 14, 2016, the State Board of Education approved its inclusion, not just the Bataan Death March, but World War II in the Philippines, in the U.S. history curriculum framework for grade 11. So for the first time, this will be learned by students in California and hopefully across the United States. So I urge all of you, if you have children, and I urge the city council to please help us implement this curriculum framework. We have sample lesson plans that are now available through our website created by Bay Area High School history teachers in accordance with the California Common Core Standards. They are available for free, including primary documents. And this, this lesson plan will not only teach the contributions of the Filipinos, but it will teach the legacy of the greatest generation, the, what they stood for, love for country, duty to family, freedom. And these are important things to learn, especially in precarious times such as these, such as what we have now. It is very important that we carry on, especially those who are descendants of the greatest generation, to carry on their legacy so that future generations, our future leaders, so that they will learn the best of what America stands for. So thank you so very much. Thank you for this great honor. Thank you. Cecilia, thank you for coming today. And Cecilia, what, what people don't um, maybe know about her is that she's worked tirelessly to get the Congressional Medals of Honors for those Madongs who are still alive and um, they have deserved and earned the respect um, from the United States and from the Army um, for that, all of the pain and trouble that they went through uh, for this country. So, thank you, Cecilia. <laughs> Before we move on to item five, I just want to take a moment. I want to thank Councilmember Martinez for being a leader in our community and exemplifying what it means to appreciate immigrant heritage um, and your um, dedication to um, speaking up on behalf of the Filipino community is greatly appreciated and, and your compassion for it is evident and I'm just very grateful to have you on the City Council. Thank you. <coughs> item five is announcements of commission and committee vacancies. Madam Clerk. Mayor and Council, this evening the announcement is the same as it was at the last meeting, which is to say if you wish to apply, you have until June 11th to get your applications in. You can find all the information on our city website. And the appointments for those who are successful candidates will be on July 10th at a special city council meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Item 6 is city council member uh, special announcements or reports on meetings attended. Member Pats? Um, so, yes, I went to the... Uh, Assembly of Bay Area Governors, uh, good, sorry, Assembly of Bay Area Governments, I've promoted myself there. Uh, it was a lovely day in the city. Got to take Bart over, catch a nice handy scooter and ride it to the uh, ABAG <laughs> office, which was lovely. Shots uh, hard. And uh, voted on some bylaw changes. So thank you. Thank you. Member um, Medina. Um, you know, I missed the previous council meeting, so it's been a little bit of time since I've been here. Um, but I wanted to thank my fellow council members for coming out last month and celebrating my, my birthday with me and walking and knocking on doors for Measure C for my birthday party. Yes, I am that cool. Um, <laughs> but I just uh, want to take a moment and recognize, um, you know, how much hard work they've been putting into the community, and I appreciate all of you for showing up for that. Thank you, Member Martinez. Uh, let's see. I just want to thank the mayor for putting together 
this fine celebration uh, to celebrate Pride Month. And, uh, oh, I should note that we have launched our Phase 1 uh, customers for our uh, East Bay Community Energy. So the commercial accounts here in Emeryville are not now getting cleaner, greener, cheaper energy um, thanks to East Bay Community Energy. Thank you. Member Donahue. Uh, I don't have anything to report. Nothing to report. I don't have anything that I wish to report at this time either. We'll move on to the city manager's report. Madam City Manager. No report this evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We'll move on to ex parte communications. Members, are there any? No. Seeing none, public comment for the consent agenda or items not on this agenda. Seeing none, we'll move to the consent calendar. Is there a motion? Move consent calendar. Second. There's a motion from Member Martinez and a second from Vice Mayor Medina to approve the consent calendar. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Donahue. Aye. Council Member Martinez. Aye. Council Member Potts. Aye. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. And Mayor Bowders. Aye. The consent calendar is approved. Item 11 is public hearings. We have one public hearing tonight. Public hearing is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Emeryville authorizing the Chief of Police to issue an annual cabaret license to Madison Marquette for calendar year 2018. Thank you. I have, I want to, I want to ask you a question. Yes. Is there a change in the application from last year's cabaret license? No. Members, do you wish to waive presentation? Yes. Yes. <laughs> presentation yes, has been waived. We'll take questions if there are any questions. Nope. Seeing none, this is a public hearing. Members of the public are entitled to speak for three minutes. Any member of the public who wishes to speak may approach the podium now. Public hearing is open, Madam Clerk. The time is 8.03. Seeing and hearing none, Madam Clerk, the public hearing is closed. The time is 8.03. Members, is there any discussion? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. There's a motion from Vice Mayor Medina and a second from Member Donahue to approve the application for a cabaret license. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Potts? Aye. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders? Aye. The resolution is approved. There are no action items tonight. There are no planning director reports tonight because we had no quorum. Is there any other director who wishes to report tonight? You do wish to report. I would just, just like to say in reference to the previous item about the vacancies and the application period, I would just once again like to emphasize uh, encouraging you all and anyone else who's listening to encourage any qualified candidates to apply for the Planning Commission. We have uh, three seats that are up for appointment, and uh, so we need some good people on the Planning Commission. Thank you. You've all heard your responsibility to find us good Planning Commissioners. Anyone else? Andrew says no. Okay. So moving past that, uh, future agenda items, Member Pats or Member Medina? No. no. Member Donahue? Uh, no. Member Martinez? Nope. I have two items. One, I would like to ask the Council's support to have at a future agenda item a review of the PACE programs. There is some consumer protection issues that the Sustainability Committee has discussed that we think merit some review by the City Council since we authorize those here. There's no cost to us to exit the JPA and we think it merits discussion. Is there a support for that? Sure. There is. Um, just a question, would we be discussing um, uh, other PACE providers? We would be discussing the existing ones okay. um, and whether or not we need to have contracts with all of them. Okay. Yes. Remember Donahue? Fine. Okay, we will find an appropriate agenda time to do that. And I had a second one, and of course I'm blanking on it. No, it's not too bad. It's important. <laughs> um, I'm really going to hold up adjournment with this, aren't I? Okay. Um, this is why. We need to announce your birthday next time. What's that? Maybe we need to announce your birthday next time. Keep the age oh, thing going. Yeah, no, we don't need to do that. Um, Okay, I, this is like last time where I couldn't remember the pace thing and now I can't remember the other thing. Um, you can leave this meeting open. Don't we have a closed session? And then if you remember, yeah. we can That's come true. Back to so it. I would like to recess if nobody objects. I would recess this meeting so I, if I think of it, we can come back and do it. So I'm going to recess the um, open. Uh, it's 8.08, Madam Clerk. I'm sorry, 8.06. My eyes are going bad. I'm going to recess this meeting. I'm going to call to order.